Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi and this is Addicted Fishing. If you guys are new to this channel, be sure to go down here below and subscribe to this channel below and hit that little bell notification. We come out with educational pieces, entertaining pieces, and inspiring fishing content from areas all over the world. Today we're talking trout and we're doing a little educational piece on how to fish Berkeley power eggs for trout. One of my very, very favorite techniques and it works for big fish, little fish, and all kinds of different species of trout. It works really well and they have great scents and great styles. And we're gonna take you guys by the hand, show you step by step the two different methods that I like to use for these, how to rig them up and how to fish them and hopefully we get on some fish today. So stay tuned, you guys are gonna like what you see. So Berkeley power egg, what I have and what we're talking about when we talk about a Berkeley Power Egg are these little rubber eggs that Berkeley makes. And these things are extremely effective. It's the same kind of material that they use for their uh, power bait, but it's in a little harder form. And that harder form makes it really convenient and really user friendly for the angler because they don't fly off or they don't fall apart so easily. This one's a garlic scented one and this one's a normal uh, bait scent, kind of just a, a fishy fish smell. I don't know. It smells like power bait, honestly. Um, but the garlic ones are one of my favorite. These white and clear garlic ones are some of the ones that I've had the best, uh, best success on while out here fishing. Um, and also another little add on to that is some of our addicted steelhead eggs. These are a mad river egg and we take these a little bit smaller size, different colors though. And you can add with any kind of scent that you want, whether that be anise or shrimp or uh, any of the other good smelling flavors that those trout like. Um, and again, very delicate, very easy technique for these feeding trout, kind of really keys in on their natural feeding tendencies of eating these eggs in the lakes. Because even though a lot of these trout are sterile, that they're stock in the lakes and ponds across the US, they still go into fall spawn. So they go and spawn and different species of fish spawn in these ponds and lakes. And so you want to kind of adapt and go towards that natural presentation of these power eggs. And again, that very user-friendly size and, and firmness of that egg so that it stays on your hook really easily. So the hook setup or the rod setup that I'm going to use for this most commonly because all these are very buoyant. Every single one of these rubber eggs floats very well. So I'm going to go with a technique that's more of off the bottom of the lake. So the rod setup that you want for this fishing is going to be some somewhat of an ultralight rod. This is an Okuma Salilo two to six pound rod. It's one of my favorite setups for this fishing. It's about seven and a half feet long, uh, but that ultralight sensitivity is what's key here. It helps you cast a long ways. It allows you to feel that sensitivity of those nice light trout bites, as well as it's a lot of fun to fight a bigger fish or a smaller fish on, depending on what you're getting yourself into out there. I have a 3000 series reel on here with a, with a, with a braided line. I'd like the braided line for the bottom bottom fishing setup, which this one is. This is, from, this is set up for fishing from the bottom of the lake, which we'll go over as we go through here. Um, but I like the braided line because it's a very sensitive line and you can see just the slightest bite or the slightest line rub from those trout registered down your rod, which you can't see with a fluorocarbon or a monofilament main line. Uh, that braided line is very sensitive and tight and doesn't have any stretch to it. So it shows more of those bites. What I've done here is something kind of crafty. And what this does is it allows me to feel the bite of that fish without him detecting that the hook or anything is there. But I have a slide weight. This is just a tangle free weight. It goes right on my main line here. And what I've done is I've just added a barrel swivel on there big enough to where that, that weight can't float or slide over the, the roundness of that swivel head. Um, and then I have a 12 pound leader tied on to that. This is a 12 pound fluorocarbon. I've gone really heavy on this 12 pound rating for this leg just because there's some big fish in here. Uh, but you can go anywhere from four to six to eight to 10, all the way up to a 12 pound. I wouldn't go much heavier unless you know there's some big 20 pound trout in that lake or something. So your leader length is gonna depend on how much vegetation is on the bottom of that lake. If you know there's a lot of hydrilla or moss or weeds or anything on the bottom of the structure of that lake, you're gonna wanna adjust your leader to that depth. If you know it's about five and a half to six feet tall vegetation on the bottom, which isn't uncommon in some lakes around, you're gonna to wanna to tie that leader to six, eight, 10 feet so that it floats up above that vegetation line and gets in front of those fish where they're gonna be feeding. Today, it's a nice rocky bottom on this lake. So I went with about a four foot leader, three and a half, four foot leader. And I have a number two must add bait hook on here. You can go down to a number four. I could recommend that for smaller trout. That way you can get a better hook set in those small mouths. But again, we're going for big fish today. So we're gonna use a number four or a number two size hook. And that's just a number, number two must add bait hook. It's got the spurs on the back there. A couple extra barbs to keep that bait on there. 
And the way I'm gonna rig these power eggs, a lot of times I always use more than one. Unless it's a very sensitive bite or I'm fishing for little trout, I'm gonna use more than one, normally two or three different eggs on that hook throughout the day so that I have a little more scent and a little more bait and a little bigger meal for those fish to come and key in on. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna run my hook right through the middle of both these eggs it's not imperative that you get both of them on the hook. They're obviously stuck together. But what that does is it just ensures that when you go to cast really hard or far, which is nice because you can do that with these eggs, that the other one's not gonna fly off and you're only gonna be stuck with one. So two is normally just as buoyant, as, as buoyant as you want it. You can go three if you're, if you're, if they want a bigger meal that day or you're just trying to key in on more scent. So I usually slide that top one right over the eye of the hook so that it's holding on there and that whole shank and tip of that hook and point of it is still exposed, which is gonna give us a good hook set. So what I'm gonna do now, so I'm gonna find a good spot in the lake. So if we're fishing in the winter, a lot of times the fish are gonna be deep. If you're fishing in the spring and summer, the fish can tend to be more shallow feeding on that aquatic life. Um, so in, in most situations, you're gonna to wanna to find either where they had stocked the trout in the lake or where that migrating path of those, fat, of those fish are or where the freshwater inlets are. So that freshwater inlets are gonna dump in that fresh water and some sort of feed and it's gonna draw those fish to those areas to either just feed or spawn or whatever it might be that time of year that you're gonna be fishing. So got both my eggs on there, got about a four foot leader. Now I'm gonna find a good spot in the lake and I'm gonna cast this out there. The nice part about these power eggs is you can cast them as hard and as far as you want. So I'm gonna really whip this one out there, get it clear out in the lake. And the key to this is letting this get down to the bottom. You wanna sink that float, or you wanna sink that weight all the way down to where you feel a nice solid thud onto the bottom. You're gonna close that bail, and then you're gonna reel that line tight to where you have a nice tight grip all the way out to that line to where your weight's on the bottom and you're holding against that swivel to the weight. That way when a fish does bite, it's pulling immediately on your rod tip and you're gonna register that bite and be able to see it on the tip, kinda of like what's happening right now. You see that tip bouncing up and down, that's just the, the stuff rolling across the bottom until it settles into a good spot. So once it's set in, once I have my bait down in the zone and I know it's fishing, I'm gonna either set that rod in a rod holder, put it in some, you know, set it against your cooler, or put it on a little rod holder that you can make from a stick on the bank and I'm gonna wait for those fish to bite. The key to it though is once you do get a bite is to let those fish fully eat it. If they're swimming around and they're nibbling at it and they're grabbing it and not fully committing to that bait, you wanna let them eat it because a lot of the times when you fish these power eggs, the fish is gonna swallow it, which allows for a great hook set and you're not, you're not gonna lose that fish as you're reeling it in throughout the fight. So keep that in mind. Be sure to leave that line on the water until that fish is fully grabbed, lift it up and then set the hook. So the last thing I wanna talk about when talking about these power eggs is the different colors. A lot of times your bite's gonna differ on either your scent or your color throughout the day. If it's cloudy and rainy outside, a lot of times I'm gonna go out of nature with a lighter or a more vibrant color, whether it be the, the chartreuse uh, and clear or the orange or anything that's gonna radiate a little bit more light on those dark color days or those dark sky days. On a day where it's a clear sky and it's nice weather, I'm gonna go with some kind of pink or a little bit lighter color like the white and clear. Um, and a lot of times that's gonna differ on the weather. Some days it won't matter. Whatever, they, whatever you can get in front of that fish, they're usually gonna eat. But I like to go back and forth in between cloudy skies and clear skies into what kind of color sequence that I go with. And the scent, it's good to have different scents for each different style. If I have a couple different, like, like here, you see I have the rainbow, which is just a normal fish scent, which is a normal power bait scent. And then I have the chartreuse, which is again, a garlic scent and either a garlic or a shrimp or anything that kind of keys in on a different bite for those fish is a great thing to have. You can actually add one of each. You can kind of give them the smorgasbord. You can play with this a lot when you're out there on the lake and it allows you to key in on what those fish are biting because a lot of times you'll be in a row of guys and you have the garlic power egg in the white and you're the only one that's gonna catch fish. So have a few different varieties, buy three or four different varieties of them so that you can kind of key in on those different bite tendencies given the situation of the day. All right, so I'm gonna get this line back in the water and toss it in, but in the meantime, Sean's gonna cut to a couple of reels of us nailing some trout on these power eggs that we have in the past. So you guys stay tuned, check this out right here. All right, 
everybody. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. These power eggs are one of the most effective and the easiest things to use out here on the lakes. I know I don't leave home without them, whether it's for trout or even salmon and steelhead. So get some of those power eggs, use this bottom fishing setup and go out there and have fun on the lake. If you guys haven't already, be sure to go down here, hit that little bell notification for Addicted Fishing so that you can see all these new tutorials coming out every day. We're out here on the lake today and we're filming a bunch of them. So you guys stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe, drop a little like below, and comment be before you leave with whether or not you've ever caught anything on this power bait or these power eggs. We wanna hear it from you guys, whether you think it works or not. I know I like it, so let's see if you do too. Stay fishy guys, and we'll see you out there on the river.